So today, LSU, of what will probably be at least around five, had a player who told the staff, and it was announced today by Matt Zenitz of 247, who first reported it, that Jackson Howard, the edge rusher, defensive end, whatever you want to label him these days, it doesn't really matter, the kid's coming off the edge, uh, had told the staff that he is in the transfer portal. So a couple of things. I did see a lot of LSU fans say, man, we really wish we could have hold on to, held on to the kid. I agree with you. I think the kid can work into something, be talented. But look, man, I, I do think that LSU in a lot of ways during this entire process, so in case you didn't know, the portal is going to open up on April the 15th. So five days away, less than that now because we're at 7 o'clock at night, there's going to be at least five players that are going to hit the portal at minimum. I do think that you can take something from this when you see some guys hit the portal. Let me explain. I think that there is a situation and a place where if you see some some DBs, if you see a guy like today, an edge rusher, I, I think that LSU will show you where they think, number one, they have enough depth to compete. Number two, maybe somebody wants to just go and have more playing time and is unable to get that right now at LSU. Or number three, they're just not, in my opinion, or their opinion, I should say, uh, good enough to be here. I will prepare you because I know that you know this, but what happens a lot of times is, and I see it in the chat all the time, hey, man, we got to go and get two interior defensive tackles. No doubt. 100% agree with you. We might not need to go get a running back because the April 17th date of Trey Holly seems like it's going to be pushed back into May. So we don't even really know if Trey Holly is going to get a court date when the portal opens and things will get resolved. I don't think that you can play around and wait for it. I think you got to go get a running back because, guys, if his next court date goes into May and goes into May and then they set a trial date for July, then what? They set a trial date for August. September, then what? Now, Brian Kelly was very adamant about, I'll just call it like it is, the innocence to some extent of Trey Holly. But I think you need to go get it back. You know what we don't talk about, what we don't mention or discuss is who may enter the portal. Now, I'm going to tell you this, fair warning. I'm not naming any names. I don't think it's fair to me. I don't think it's fair to them. I don't think it's fair to LSU. But I'm going to give you position groups of what I think could happen here. Could be wrong. Could be right. But this is strictly an opinion on what I think is going to happen. Again, key word here, think. Can be wrong. Today, as Jackson Howard enters, I think that they feel as if that they have a really, really good presence on the edge. I got to admit, and this is not a guy that we've talked a lot about, I think Ahmad Bro has looked pretty good, the kid from Ruston. Honestly, taller than I thought he'd be. He's actually, his arm length is longer than I thought it'd be. He's gotten, just really looks like a pretty solid SEC edge. Now, how does that translate? You know, is he better than Jackson Howard? Now, I, I don't know all that. Been a little impressed with him, to be honest. And one-on-ones, uh, got a sack. Not with the ones, on one-on-ones in Pascal, he did get a sack. Like that a lot. Came off the edge. Quick, quick, quick. Off of the edge was Ahmad Bro. I think LSU feels deep there. And I think Jackson Howard leaving tells you that that is a deeper room out, out there on the edge. That's why he's hitting the portal, guys. And I think... This is how I feel for him. I think he knew he was in a battle, and he lost the battle to be rotating with the ones. I, I hate to say that for the young man. I wish you would have stayed. He's got heavy hands, and he could have done well here. I just don't know if he wanted to wait, and that's on him. Because there's a reason why he somewhat got beat out by some of these guys that are playing the edge. Got to admit, too, Kalaj Cobbins, has been a little bit of a freak of nature when it comes to guys. He's too fast for tackles. 
The only one that that I have seen him once go against was Will Campbell. He got beat. It wasn't pretty because Will got his hands on him. You're talking about a top five pick in next year's draft. But, guys, he's going to go against tackles that aren't Will Campbell if he gets the chance. And his speed is something that I got to admit, I don't think that people realized. Now, him out in coverage, don't like it. I think he needs one job as a freshman to get better at. Rush the passer, and he'll be fine. Jackson Howard wasn't built for that. They even put him sometimes inside, put his hand in the dirt, and it didn't work. He was, in my opinion, wasn't physical enough at times, not all the times, because he had some good plays. He had some good stuff. I think he's still a power four type of DN edge guy. Once he got in that interior, had to put his hand in his dirt, it did not work well for him. Doesn't mean anything because I still think the kid could have developed. He got I had saw the progression from him. But again, one thing that we don't mention is where are the position groups that after the 15th that we're going to see guys leave from? Number one, I do think that you're going to see multiple guys, maybe one or two, from that safety position. I, I, I do think that you might see one or two specifically from corner, maybe just one from safety, but definitely at corner, I think you're going to see some guys that are going to leave. Guys, P.J. Woodland's already taken over. And I don't know how that situation is going to work now that you have a true freshman that's out there starting and running with the ones. Guys, it's spring. So some writing on the wall is going to happen here. And I think Corey's going to tell BK, look, this guy can't play here. If we got to get under numbers, he's not going to play. I think Big A's going to let him know if they don't already know. And they're waiting for the 15th for that portal to open. I think that there is going to be maybe a player that on the defensive side, don't freak out. I'm not talking about Harold Perkins, that maybe you're not um, wanting to leave and maybe it would be unexpected but has not looked so great so far. We'll see how that goes on. But I think you're going to get to five. On the offensive side of the ball, maybe a receiver, maybe. Maybe an offensive lineman. I don't know who, maybe. I mean, Tyree Adams is not going to be one. Don't really know of any of the guards that would be one. Because I think Brad's going to want to hold on to his dudes. So I don't think that offensive line is a place. Quarterback, not going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen, I should say. Maybe the only guy that I could see transferring right now would be Ricky. But I, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. Maybe A.J. Swan hits the portal again because he doesn't win the second team job. I don't know. What I would tell you that here is, though, I just don't know if there's not going to be more defense. I, I think it's going to be more defensive guys, to be blunt with you. If there are some receivers, maybe an O-lineman, all right, you don't have the bodies that will hit the portal at running back. So, okay. I do think the fat needs to be trimmed at DB. I think the, f the fat needs to be trimmed uh, in the interior of the defensive line, too, but – you can't you can't cut anybody there. You can't move on from anybody there. You got to go get dudes, but you can't move on from anybody in case that you miss. And that position, guys, quite honestly, you probably need six guys that you can play. And you do have Dominic McKinley that's coming in. So we'll see. You're three over the scholarship limit. I think at minimum you get to five. Truth is, there's probably going to be six or seven. So I say all this to say, don't panic don't be alarmed. And I know that you probably won't be. But when you see seven guys going to the portal after spring, I know that the way that the college football mind works, I see it in every program. We got seven some bitches hitting the portal? What in the hell is that about? Well, I mean, you got some teams got to make room for other dudes. Now, I will admit, they got a lot of talent, individually talented human beings on that team. I don't know if they have breakout stars. I don't know if they have first-round picks. What I do know is they got a lot of freaking talent. 
individual talent on that team, both sides of the football. And the question becomes, who are some of the guys that aren't qualified to be here? And I think that you probably in your mind right now are thinking, well, who in the hell Blake's talking? You probably know who. You probably know who. But there are two receivers that I'm thinking about in my head right now that I think need to probably need to look elsewhere. I think that there are a couple of corners, maybe a safety, that need to look elsewhere. And maybe a guy that no one would think would be thinking about transferring, he might go in there. Bottom line becomes, I think that the, the safe number is five. I think the great number is seven.